He was, his full name is Bali Chakravarti, being such a, a Chakravarti means one who is the best of everything. So it's Bali Chakravarti. And uh, his father was Virochan and his mother's name was Devamba. He was from the Kshatriya Gotra. Now he was an Asur by birth and uh, his outer covering was that of a, of a Basur, uh, of a Asur rather than Basur, sorry. And uh, He's in the clear lineage of uh, Prahlad Maharaj, and he was his grandson. Now, first thing that comes to my mind is that a person who is not at all demoniac, and such as like Prahlad Maharaj and Bali Maharaj, there may be a demon outwardly in their material dress. But uh, one should not be considered or make a judgment by somebody just from the outer dress of a person, rather or according to the birth. One should wait before making any judgment. Um, normally it is said that the demons are in the mode of ignorance and the patient, but Bali Maharaj had a very exalted qualities to which I'm going to come later. Now I've thrown some light on who is a Mahajan and uh, why he's important in our scriptures. Now this is as per Srila Prabhupada. He first starts a sentence that even Arjun should be considered a Mahajan because he followed the scriptures, which was imparted to him by Krishna Bhagwan. So one of the first things of a, of a Mahajan is that a personality whose footsteps one need to be followed, and although they have to be devotees of the Lord. Now, other thing is that if we follow such persons, exalted persons' footsteps, then we, we know that we are on the right path, and it may lead us to the, our spiritual destination that we are all aiming for. Now, Mahajan also means they follow the Parampara system and uh, one can have to have full faith to follow such a Mahajan. So that is the, my, one of the things why if you need to have benefit from uh, Mahajan, you have to follow and uh, such Mahajan so that you can gain your spiritual knowledge. Now, Prasila Prabhupada says that in Christianity also there is a Mahajans are called Messiahs, Messias, which, uh, which I, I didn't know about that. Now, background to the Bali Maharajas that his, as you say, his father was Virochan, and for some reason he was killed by Indra. Now, Indra being of such a character, he killed Virochan, but at the same time, Virochan Maharaj, but at the same time, he burnt him to such an extent that only ashes were left. He did this because their guru was uh, Shukracharya and he had ability to bring life somebody who was already dead. But he did it to such an extent that with the ashes, he could not be brought back. Now, obviously, this angered his son, the Bali Maharaj, and uh, he fought a war against the Indra. Now, with this... Uh, there's always been a war between the demons and the demigods for who is going to sit on the heavenly planets. So this is what quite a couple of wars have been sought, probably more in the history. Now, in the in the in this war, initially uh, Bali Maharaj is killed by Indra, but with the blessings of the Shukracharya, he is being brought back to the life, and he is alive. Now, in the second war, Indra, uh, the, the uh, second war is by Bali Maharaj because he wanted to sort of ruin over, run over the three worlds. And in this way, he gained absolute power over the heavenly planets and all the god demigods ran away from them. In that way, they went to Vishnu Bhagwan and they asked to help to see how they can get rid of the Bali. But Vishnu Bhagwan initially refused saying that he is a, a devotee, so I'm not going to kill him, but I will find a way how to get him out of your way and you can get back your heavenly kingdom. So as you say, Vishnu Bhagwan is quite sort of a, a personality, obviously, to find ways out. At the same time, both the parties will benefit from his intervention. Now, he came in the form of, he took assumed the form of a Vamandev, and uh, 
I'm sure somebody is going to talk about, it's already talked about Vamandev, so I'm not going to go into his, his details of how he was. But he had a, such a personality that he was in the form of like a dwarf, but a Brahman. And uh, everybody sort of said that what a divine character this person is. And uh, he, at this time, Bali Maharaj was performing a Ashramed Yagna. And that is when Vamandev made his entry. Now, Bali Maharaj, he at once knew that this is a, a Brahman who has come to me and he is obviously has come for some interest. So he immediately asked him, I mean, after offering the prayers, washing his feet and uh, pray, offering prayers to him, he said, what can I do for you? What do you want me to do for you? Now, Vaman, there was such a shining face, which is he was the Lord's avatar. He was Lord himself, rather, not an avatar. And uh, he simply asked for three paces that he, from, uh, from Bali Maharaj. Now, Bali Maharaj says that this is not a very intelligent thing that you are asking for because you are a dwarf. And with the three paces, how much you are going to, how much land you are going to get. But he insisted at this time, Shukracharya, as you say, he was uh, Bali Maharaj as his Gurudev. He, he was somebody who had future knowledge like Trikar knowledge. And he suggested, he told that this is not a uh, Brahman, but he is a Vishnu Dev. Now, Bali Maharaj, we thought of a little bit on the past. Bali Maharaj was a great, he sort of aspired and he sort of worshipped his Guru like anything. And he always believed what his Guru told him. And because of his disabilities, he got great knowledge and blessings from all the Brahmins around. And this way, he became a very powerful person. And that is the reason why he was able to conquer all the three, three planets, including the Swarga. So he sort of, uh, when Shukradev resisted that you should not do this because you're going to lose everything, Bali Maharaj said, he declined. He said, he's a Brahman who has come to my door. I would rather risk death, lo lose everything, rather than deny anything that this Brahman is asking me. So in that way, so he did not, ref he, did, he refused to obey his spiritual master's instructions. And at that time, the Shukracharya gave him a curse that you will destroy, you will get everything will be destroyed, you will not possess anything. But Bali Maharaj, being the way he was, with such a exalted qualities, he sort of never paid any attention. And he went ahead and then for, asked for Brahman to see, take the three steps. Now, at that time, Vaman Dev being the Lord himself, he expanded himself and he, he became to such a huge person that everybody could see this universal form with the six opulences of a Bhagavan. And in the two steps, he had conquered all the three worlds. So he asked where, where should he put the next step? And Bali Maharaj offered his head, going before him, put that you can please put your third foot, third, your third space over my head. Now at this time, Bali Maharaj's wife was Vindyantvati, Vindyavati. And she was fearing of the death of her husband. So she was also started praying to the uh, Vamandev. But Vamandev became sort of had other ideas because he had come for the saving of a devotees rather than for killing anybody. Now, it, at this time, he sort of became so pleased with uh, Bali Maharaj that he said that, uh, and yes, and other thing that Bali Maharaj asked uh, that gave was his, he said he lost everything and in charity he gave away the three worlds that he had conquered. And Vaman Dev told him that you have, you are such a devotional person, you are my, my devotee and I will ask you to get down to the Sutala planet downstairs where you will be able to live in opulence. But he had already prepared all this appearance with the help of the Vishwamitri, Vishwamitra. So that's where Bali Maharaj left and left to go. But the Lord said, don't go yet because I'm going to come with you. So Lord is always guiding at the gates of the Bali Maharaj's place. He also told him, I'm so pleased with you that you are going to take the place of Indra as a heavenly, in, in, in the heaven, and the eighth Man Manvantar. And that is what you are going to be. And that's what is going to happen in the future. 
So he he left this, and at that time, Bali Maharaj and the family and everything went down into the Sutala, down to, uh, in, in the sort of in that area. Now, other things that I have considered that why we are telling with this story that Bali Maharaj is, is the Mahajan. Now, we have found out that he's such a, even from coming from a demon family, he has such a magnanimous character. Everything that he had, he gave up in charity. And he worshipped the Lord Vishnu. And uh, he was such a realized soul that he sort of never cared. And his important prayers are there in the, I think, eighth canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam that we should follow, that this material world, whatever we have, is nothing to us. And we have to sort of abide by whatever we want at the lotus feet of Sri Krishna. And in this way, he gave everything to Krishna and he gave, and he was, this is what we call as Atmanivedan, the nine steps of the devotional bhakti. And this is one of them, which is the highest form. Now, other point why he should be Mahajan is that he did respect his guru, but when the guru told him no, he found out what is right and the wrong, and what he had to do. So he went against his guru and the guru, instead of going with him, he cursed him, which I think is a, quite a controversial point. So he sort of, he kept to his promise, never went back and gave, as you say, he lost everything. Now, other thing that we would say that he was such a exalted qualities and his main qualities are, he was a charitable person, absolute truthfulness, and the complete surrender, Atmani Vedam to Vishnu, he's a Krupa Siddhi, and which means he was, he may not be doing his prayers or devotional service properly, but in the end, he received the salvation by giving at the lotus feet of the, of the Lord Vishnu. And uh, this is the things that he got such a devotion because he was the grandson of Prahlad Maharaj. So, I think he's a sort of being a demon. He's such an exalted person that I pay my respect to Bali Maharaj. Thank you, Prabhuji. Well done. Very well researched and uh, presented as well. Thank I you. loved it. I understood everything. Oh, thank you. <laughs> that was amazing. I understand everything what you said, Mataji. Very nice. It all makes sense. Thank you. Thank you. I so loved it. it. She's going to continue with the Bhagavatam now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> very Lovely. Well. Yeah, very good. Yeah, I enjoyed doing it. Thank you. It was, it was a nice. I didn't know much about Bali Maharaj. I knew something, but uh, such a great person, such a being an Asura, we would, we would have just have ignored him apart yeah. from what he did. But what he did was Atmani Vedan <laughs> is something that has stuck in my mind. Excellent. Yeah. No, thank you mm. for that. Thank you, Prabhupada. Very nice, Mataji. Thank you, Riyaj. <laughs> Very good. Uh, so let's carry on. Um, and we'll take questions, I think, at the end. Um, so if you do have any questions, uh, put them on the chat or uh, remember them at the end. So who'd like to go next? Um, Prabhuji, well, can I go? Because I need to leave a bit early as of well. Of course. You can share the screen if you like. Uh, I'm not connected. Um, oh, I'm using my okay. phone, so if you if you don't mind, otherwise I can just read it through. Uh, no, I can do it from. Okay. Uh, wait a second. Let me just. Me... I just need to. Uh, connect. Zoom as well. Uh, no, what I can do. Maybe I can just do it through here. One second. Let me just save it. <clears throat> So it's a little complicated to get it on from one place to another, uh, but should be it. Should manage it. Should manage it. Just one second. You you made an effort to put it on uh, a PowerPoint, so it'd be always good to show it. So send. Okay. Uh, 
Okay, now uh, let's just find it. Downloads. Great. So where there we are. Hope everybody can see it. Okay. okay. Yes. Thank you. So um, I didn't do uh, a lot of research. So this is just a very, very high level information on Lord Brahma. And I'm sure everybody on the call probably has a lot more awareness than what I've got here, but I'll give it a go. Um, so Om Namah Bhavate Vasudevaya, Hare Krishna. Um, so yes, yeah, so Brahma, um, He's the creator God, and uh, he was actually uh, evolved from the navel of uh, Lord Vishnu, and he came, he came on a on a lotus. Um, hence, why he sits on a lotus uh, in his um, form. Um, he's also known as some some say. Uh, Sayambu, uh, which is self-born, Jatru um, Mukha, um, having four faces, uh, Janis Swarva, Swarva, a god of knowledge, and Vedanta, god of Vedas. So he create, he's a creator of the four Vedas, one from each mouth. Um, his uh, consort is Saraswati. And his father, he's the father, the creator of four of four Kumaras, Narada, Daksha, and Marichi, and many more. So next slide. Um, so he's part of the three murtis, so Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiv. And Brahma is the ruler of the mode of He's a ruler of mode of passion and the one who, under the direction of the supreme uh, personality of Godhead, Krishna, creates the material universe. Um, from him, all the species of life within the universe descend, and he begets the offsprings called the Prajapats, who descends, who, whose descendants populate all the planets. As a first cre has the first created human, Lord Brahma was personally manifested and initiated into spiritual realization by Lord Krishna himself, who revealed Vedic knowledge um, in Brahma's heart at the dawn of creation. Um, so Brahma is the, the Lord that the demigods go to when there's a problem that they cannot uh, resolve. So Brahma then approaches Vishnu uh, uh, for direction. Um, and, uh, and having a close relationship with the Lord, um, he, he's person and he's, in, he's included some of Brahma's prayers. So um, one of the prayers that Lord Brahma uh, wrote uh, the Brahma Smita is a poem that glorifies um, Krishna just by his association with Krishna. Um, yeah. And then the last slide, uh, I think, so the last slide is just a painting showing um, Krishna um, communicating the Vedic knowledge. Uh, so through his flute, so the vibration of Chris, Krishna's flute is the origin of the Vedic hymn. So Lord Brahm, Brahma, who sits on a lotus flower, heard the sound vibration of Krishna's flute and was thereby initiated, uh, and thereby initiated by the Gayatri Mantra. And this is, I think, in the um, uh, Prabhupada's Purport Chaitanya Chari, Chaitanya. Jerry yeah. um, eight point one three eight two. So I think how and uh, there's not. I didn't go into too much detail for Lord Brahma, um, but um, I hope this is enough, and I'm sure everybody knows a lot more than what I've actually shared. But um, Hare Krishna. thank you for a uh, lovely effort of uh, putting it together, mm -hmm. and actually a good summary of uh, Lord Brahma. Okay. Thank you Thank very you. much. Uh, well done.
very nice as well. Thank you, Renuka. Well done. Like your slides. Yes, very lively. Yes, well done. Well done. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well done, yes. Very nice. Lovely. So, um, who would like to go next? Uh, we have... Guruji, can I? Yes, okay, Riyaj. So, Riyaj, <laughs> looking at Narad Muni. Go for it, Riyaj. Okay, Guruji. Hare Krishna everyone, today I'm going to talk about Narad Muni and he is the 12, in 12 Mahajans. So, so, so let me, let me tell the story of Narad Muni and his birth and he is the teacher of all. So, so. So he is the son in the one time when he was in heaven, he was singing the not describing Krishna songs. So some Gandhar was cursed him to to take birth in the earth planet earth planet. So he took birth in the earth planet as the son of as the son of a, a maid servant. So uh, he was a low, so he was doing, he was playing with other friends and one time it, it was Chetur Mas and it is the month of snow and rain. So that, so that time four Bhakti Vedantas came uh, to Narad Muni's hut and they, they take shelter there. And that four months, Narad Muni's mother and, and Narad Muni served them nicely. And, and Narad Muni would give, give the food to them. And, uh, and whenever he go to their room, he will listen the, the lectures of the glories of Sri Krishna. And then uh, and, uh, Chaturma is finished and then the Bhaktivedanta and then Bhaktivedanta were, were left because they have to do some tapasya. So, so they so they went. So they went to the tapasya. So then, uh, so then Narad Muni and their mother were only left, and uh, and then once his mother went to out went outside, and when she was uh, when she went to bring something, a snake a snake came in her way and bite her leg, and she died. So then Narad Muni, Narad Muni heard that, that her, uh, his mother was dead, so he did not cry. So then he, so he left his hut and he went in, he went to a forest where, where there is peace. But in his way, all, he saw all shopping malls, but he was not attracted to them. So when he was going to the jungle, all the jackals were yelling. So the so he gone to the jungle and he said we so I had under that banyan tree to do bhakti to Lord Lord Krishna. So he so he went and and they and he he and he doing tapasya and when in his heart he saw Lord Krishna and in some time in one minute uh, Lord, Lord Krishna disappeared from his heart and he was disturbed and when he opened his eyes he saw he saw he saw Lord Krishna before his eyes and he and he disappeared again so he again tried to do he tried to do tapasya. So again, Lord Lord Krishna appeared in his heart and said that you did not dare so much bhakti. That, that's why I, I disappear. 
Uh, that's why I disappear. So, so then Narad Muni understood that he had to do more bhakti, and in and that day onwards he did bhakti, and in the uh, end of his life came and he died, and his soul became spiritual. Then, then he took a spiritual body like like a Narad Muni and he has a veena in his hand play, uh, saying glories, always talking, always saying and talking the glories of Sri Krishna. That's, that's the birth of the Narad Muni and now I want to I want to describe some devotees who were the students of Narad Muni. And, and first I want to describe about Vasudeva and I would tell the introduction of Srimad Bhagavatam, then I would go to Srila Vasudeva. So 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 one so one time Srila Vyasadeva was in Badrinath in some place named Badrinath. So there his hut and his home was there. And one time he wrote he wrote he wrote he was writing his scriptures all Mahabharat Bhagavad Gita and then he came out of his heart and he, he in his heart he feel like distress so he could not understand why it is like that so when he was thinking like that Srila Narad Muni came and then he instructed he instructed Vyasdeva that you have but not particularly this described about Krishna that's why you are feeling distress and and he started telling Srimad Bhagavatam on the banks of Mother Saraswati and and then and then Srila Vyasadeva and Srila Vyasadeva then understood that he has not particularly described about Krishna. So, so next next one I want to tell is about the King Prachina Barhit. So, so, so King Prachina Barhit was was a king, and he he was. Yeah, in his palace, he was always not thinking about Krishna, but he was a devotee of Krishna. He would sometimes spend on Krishna and whole time with, with material joys. So one time Narad, Narad Muni saw this, this scene and he went to Prachina Bahit, Prachina Bahit play palace and he instructed Prachina Barhit and Prachina Barhit gave a seat to Narad Muni and then Narad Muni told a story of some uh, some animated story named, named Puranjana and then uh, and and then Prachina Barhit then he when when he when he uh, when he heard about the that his son Prachetas was highly liberated, he 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 was then he became Krishna Bhakta and he did Krishna service more and more and he went to Godhead easily. So I want to describe last last one. Last one is Maharaj Dhruva. So, so uh, Maharaj Dhruva was the was the son of Uttanapara, who was the son of Swambhuva Manu, and Swambhuva Manu was the son of Brahma, and that's why the Brahma is called Swayam, Swayam. Bhuva 
so so one time when otana pada was in his palace with his son uttama romaraj came to to palace and he saw his what his brother uttama that uh, he was sitting on his father's lap so then he he uh, he then went to his father's lap to sit sit but to sit but his stepmother but his stepmother stopped him from from sitting on his father's lap from his father's lap from his father's lap so then then drova asked why why i have to not sit on my father's lap then then his his stepmother told her that you are not the son of of my that's why you are not allowed to sit on me if you want if you want to sit on your father pray to lord vishnu that i have to born in my room so then romaraj he went crying he went crying to his his mother and he told that what happened in the palace then then his mother convinced that that you you have to do the meditation on on lord vishnu and you were and your stepmother told that correct so then dumaraj took it seriously so then he decided to take, he had a bone that he have to take the higher position than his he then his great the great grandfather brahma ji so then he went to forest and when when in his way lord krishna lord krishna sent narad muni in his way and narad muni told that you you can go, go to palace and pray why are you why are you going into this deep jungle there are many animals so the dromaraj did not take that there are wild animals so he told to narad muni that i will not go palace palace so then narad muni tried to say that repeatedly but dromaraj not reason to narad muni then narad muni understood dromaraj Drova Maharaj Bhakti, and he 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 described how Krishna was. His face was like a lotus lotus flower. Then Drova Maharaj remember the picture of lotus feet of Sri Sri Krishna. Then he went to in in under a banyan tree to meditate, and he 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 took meditation. he took meditation for 6 months and and when and when and when and in his heart lord vishnu appeared and when he was trying to think about that lord vishnu disappeared and and then dromaraj this was disturbed and open his eyes and eyes and saw that that lord vishnu was in, before his eyes eyes so then he offered namaskar then lord vishnu asked for what you can then do then do then then lord vishnu understood the 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 boon of the then the boon of roma raj and gave him that you will now you will be the pole star in the sky and that was the story proji well done that was very good very nice riyaj lovely good. lovely well summed up <laughs> thank you mata ji so um who would like to go next we have uh, sharmila or yes yes prabhu i can go okay. next okay okay well, my name is shama malini now <laughs> So Shyamma Malini yes very good very good yeah sorry uh, hari krishna everyone uh, i'm talking about yamraj 
today. Um, he's also known as Yam and Dharmaraj, and he's the god of death and justice, as we all know. He is responsible for the dispensation of law and punishment of sinners in his abode called Yamlok or Narak, as we say. He is represented as dark complexion man riding a buffalo and carrying a maze to capture souls. Uh, he's also known as the twin of Yamuna. Yamuna, we all know river goddess associated with life and the son of the sun god Surya and his mother's name Saranyu or some we say Sandhya as well, the daughter of Vishwakarma. He is accompanied by Chitra Gupta, the, another deity associated with death and his servants are known as the Yamadut. I'm going to talk a little bit more about Chitra Gupta. Um, Chitra Gupta, his task is to keep records of actions of human beings on earth and punish or reward them according to their karma. When we die, it is his duty to decide whether one should go to heaven or to the hell for the humans depending on their actions on the earth. Chitragupta is, he is the 17 Manasputra of Lord Brahma. Manasputra is a Sanskrit term, which literally means uh, willingly accepted as uh, an own son. And um, Chitragupta is believed to be created from Brahma's soul and mind. As a result of that, he is allowed to write Veda like Brahmins. And, um, Yam uh, or Yamraj uh, means twin. He has a twin sister called Yami. It also means binder, moral rule, that is Dharma, self-control, forbearance or toleration and ces cessation and ending. According, um, sorry, Yamraj, he also has a brother. His brother is um, uh, Manu, Shradhavan Manu, Shradhavan or Shradhadeva Manu. So according to Vedic tradition, Yam was considered to be the first mortal who died and went to the celestial abode. Therefore, he became the ruler of the departed. His role, characteristics and abode have been expanded in texts such as Upanishads and Puranas. And in um, he Yam is one of the Lokapalas or Dikpala, as we call it. It means a guardian of directions, appointed as the protector of the south. And um, for sorry the. Guardian of directions um, are the deities who rule the specific directions of space, and for Yom it is the south. He is described as riding a water buffalo and holding a danda, meaning stick, also referring to Vedic punishment as a weapon. He uh, also holds a noose. The Purana state that Yam is of storm clouds or dark gray complexion, but most often he is known for his blue and sometimes red complexion. Also, he's described as having four arms protruding fangs with a wrathful expression surrounded by garland of flames dressed in red, yellow or blue garments. Um, he appeared in a few stories like the Mahabharata when the Pandav were in exile. And also he appeared in Sati, Savitri Satyavan story and Sage Markandai. Markandai. Uh, Savitri and Satyavan story, I don't know, uh, most people know about this where he, uh, a couple known for their love and devotion to each other, Savitri, a princess who marries an exile 
prince called Satyavan, who was foretold to die early. Therefore, Savitri's wit and love save her husband from the death god Yamraj. Story can also can, of this this story can be found in the Vana Parva, the book of the forest of the Mahabharata. When Yudhishthira asks um, Makande whether there has ever been a woman whose devotion matched Draupadi, then Makande uh, replies was that of Savitri. And also um, in the Kata Upanishad, there is the story of the little boy Nachiket, the son of sage Vajasravasta. Who um, Nachiket was taught self knowledge, the Atman self, and Brahman ultimate reality by Lord Yum. And uh, uh, the story of Nachiket is when his father was doing a donation to, to the demigods. He was donating all cows uh, who were also barren and uh, lame. And the son was was not happy. Of course, he wanted what's best for his father, but um, um, he was not very happy. So he told his father, uh, which God are you going to give me to? And his father became angry and said, I'm going to give you to uh, Lord Yamraj. That's how Nachiket went to Yamraj. And uh, there he stayed outside for three days. Yamraj was absent. So when Yaram, Yamraj came, he felt really bad. And therefore he gave, he said, you can ask for free boons. So one of the boons was like, um, he was taught um, self-knowledge about the Atman self. That's all, Prabhu. Thank you. That's all I have to say about Lord Ram Yamraj. Thank you. Prabhu. Well done. It's a tough topic. So, <laughs> congratulations, Shyama Malini. Well thank, done. Thank you, Prabhu. <laughs> nice. Very nice. Uh, Mataji, well done. Thank you. Thank you. Very nice. Lots of information there. Um, yeah. New, new information. So Understanding. Good. Yeah. Lovely. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for the research. Very nice effort. Thank you. Uh, now we can either go to Rohit or Pitamba. Any any of you two would like to go first? Okay, I'll go. <laughs> okay. You've drawn the short straw. <laughs> okay, Pitamba. Can you see my screen? Hare Krishna. We can. Yes, we can. Lovely. Okay. Uh, first of all, I'd like to offer my humble obeisances on to all the Mahajans, the 12 Mahajans. And also you'll notice um, I've actually got 13 Mahajan and the, that's Srila Prabhupada. And the reason I've got Srila Prabhupada as the 13th Mahajan is because Guru Maharaj, Krishna Das Swami, always used to say 13th Mahajan Srila Prabhupada DJ. You know, so, you know, it's absolutely wonderful talking about uh, all the Mahajans. And the most um, one thing I found um, commonality about all the Mahajans is their connection towards Krishna. There's, there's so much link and there's so much, um, you know, um, Krishna Brahm. If you look at Bhishma, the 1,000 names of Vishnu, he introduces. If you look at Balad Maharaj, nine processes of devotional service. If you look at Narad Muni, his involvement in um, all the pastimes of the Lord. You look at Janagra Maharaj, you look at Shivji, you look at Brahma, you know, Ved Vedas, you know, it's just absolutely bewildering. Right, we will move on to the uh, Mahajan, who I'm working on, who I've worked on, is Savayam Bhuva Manu. Who is Savayam Bhuva Manu? He is the current Manu, and is in the in the current Kalpana. He's number fourteen. He's the progenitor of um, humanity, 
and he's also called Satya Vatra, which means always truthful. Where did he live? He lived in a kingdom called um, Dra Dravida, and it's um, in the southern part of Bharat. So what's the story, you know? So let's just go through the story. As the story is narrated in the Matsya Puran and in the Simrad Bhagavatam, it's basically all uh, around one of um, Shri Krishna's avatars, the very first one, where Lord Vishnu's Matsya Abhar initially appeared as a small fish to King Manu while he was washing his hands in the river. The small fish requested King Manu to save him and to honor the fish, the carp's request, King Manu placed the fish in a, a jug of water, jar of water. Soon the fish grew too big to fit in the jar and Manu shifted um, the fish into a bigger bowl. The, the fish kept growing bigger and bigger and Manu had to shift it from the um, bowl to a well and eventually to a reservoir. And um, as Krishna, you know, um, kept, kept Master of Thal, kept expanding even bigger and bigger. And we know that these are one of the uh, opulences, the potencies of the Supreme Lord, where he can make himself bigger than the biggest and the smallest of the smallest, you know. And um, then King Manu basically put him in a river. Very soon the river seemed insufficient as well. And so due to the gigantic size of um, Krishna's um, fish um, rope, um, was put into the ocean. It's at that time when the huge fish transformed into Lord Vishnu, the personality of God, Godhead, being pleased with the king, informed him that within a week there would be an inundation throughout the universe and that the fish incarnation would protect the king along with the rishis, herbs, seeds and other living entities in a boat which would be attached to the fish's horn or to Sri Krishna's Matsya Avatar horn, fish's horn. Getting, after getting aboard the boat with learned Brahmins and saintly persons, Savayam Bhuva Manu offered prayers to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the Supreme Lord who is situated in everyone's heart and thus he taught Maharaj Satyavatra, remember that's also his name, and other saintly persons about Vedic knowledge from the core of the heart. At the end of the last in inundation, the Supreme Personality of Godhead killed the demon Hayagriva and delivered all the Vedic literatures to Lord Brahma when Lord Brahma awakened from his sleep. So as all that devastation was taking place, this demon got exposed as well. So that, that goes back to, you know, when Krishna says, whenever, you know, there's a decline in um, Dharma, I always appear. So it looks like um, within um, saving the universe, there was also um, killing of a demon pastime here as well. Now in the Simrad Bhagavatam, this story concerning the great king Satyavadra and the fish incarnation of the Supreme Personality of God, Ed Vishnu, is a great transcendental narration. Anyone who hears it is delivered from the sinful reactions or sinful life. So this is absolutely lovely. So all of us who are present here, we have now benefited from this beautiful pastime. One who narrates this description of the Matsya incarnation and King Satyavatra will certainly have all his ambitions fulfilled and he will return undoubtedly return home back to Godhead. This pleased me even more. And, um, you know, my heart kind of sank. Finally, I offer my respectful obeisances onto the Supreme Personality of Godhead who pretended to be a gigantic fish who restored the Vedic literature to Lord Brahma when Lord Brahma awakened from sleep and who explained the essence of Vedic literature to King Satyavatra and the great certainly persons. King Manu later became known as Sage Manu, who also, you know, wrote the Manu, Manu Sumitra, the laws of Manu, which is very famous. Krishna even references in the Bhagavad Gita Manu as well. So this is very important. So you can see how it's all beginning to link up. 
other similar stories in other parts of the world, we have um, Noah's Ark. This is a very famous story about a, a devastation of, uh, um, of um, rain. And I can remember when I was a little child, I used to sing um, a song in um, school, which they don't sing these days because they no longer Christian country like they used to be. And it used to go like this. Well, who built the ark? Noah, Noah, who built the ark? Brother Noah built the ark. And in came the animals two by two, the hippopotamus and the kangaroo. Who built the ark? Noah, Noah, who built the ark? Brother Noah built the ark. So what it shows is, you know, like these kind of budgeons and hymns, you know, they may be in a different language, but the mood is actually, the mood of um, deliverance is there and of devotional service is also there. Not only is, um, is this past time, this, the story, sorry, written in, um, in the Bible, it's written in um, other um, so, um, societies and other cultures as well. And just to give you an idea, here's some of them. When I did my research, I was shocked that the Inca, the Aztec, the Norse, the Hopi, the Hawaiian, and Hawaiian are quite far away from us, the Greek, Judaism, Babylon, Hindi, the Sumerian civilization, the Chinese, you know, so it just shows how far, you know, this story has gone, although the variation may change a little, no matter which culture you go to, all say that the personality in question, Manu or Moses, um, was a very, very um, pious um, man. And when I did further research, I couldn't believe that, you know, flood stories from around the world, you know, there were loads of them, you know, you could just see them there, you know, so it'd be interesting to read through these and um, see what they're all about. Oh, I said Moses, um, that was incorrect. It's supposed to be Noah. It's Noah's Ark, not Moses' Ark. It's Noah's Ark. Hare Krishna. Hope you enjoyed that. Jai Shri Guru Maharaj. Oh, fantastic. Well done. You've done good research. Well done. Well yeah. done. Amazing. Excellent. Excellent. Amazing session yeah. today. Reminded us of Guru Maharaj as well in Prabhupada, 13th Marjan. So well done. Very good. Yes, very nice. Very nice. Well researched. Thank you. Difficult to uh, beat this one. And Rohit, who is supposed to be studying, <laughs> I don't know if he's actually managed to do anything. Oh, is he with us? Yeah, he is. So, Rohit, uh, no, he's... He was there. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he was there. Okay, so... Okay. No. He's gone because his turn came. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's supposed to be studying anyway. So, um, he's going to talk, he was going to talk about uh, Lord Kapil, and we can do a very quick analysis of Lord Kapil. Uh, let me just... Lord Kapil appears in the third canto of the Bhagavatam, um, and also he is uh, the one of the incarnations of the Supreme Lord. So we are very fortunate to be able to um, associate with Lord Kapil through the Srimad Bhagavatam. Um, he, his appearance in this world is through Mother Devahuti, and uh, his father is Kardam Muni, devotees will remember um, the pastime which we went through in the third canto of the Srimad Bhagavad Puran. Devahuti was a very devoted uh, wife to Kardam Muni. Kardam Muni was a great sage, and after a long period of tapasya, uh, Kardam Muni. Uh, gave um, many daughters to uh, Devahuti. And then also uh, the last uh, child he gave was um, Lord Kapildev. Um, often he's confused with the namesake, his namesake Kapil. There's another Kapil who is actually an atheist. So sometimes these two personalities are confused, uh, but we shouldn't be confused that the Lord Kapil that we're talking to is an incarnation of the Lord. 
And his philosophy that he propounded when he came was a Sankhya philosophy, uh, understanding who we are and understanding who the Lord is. That's basically Sankhya philosophy and uh, also understanding this material nature from which we are different. We are not this body, we are the spirit soul. So his teachings uh, basically were to uproot karma so that we uh, are not subjected to um, the laws of this world. And when we uh, trans end karma, we become liberated, eligible for liberation out of this world and into the spiritual world. And he's one of the 12 Mahajans uh, because of this very reason that he explained this Sankhya philosophy. Uh, his, he was very, very beautiful, uh, golden hair, lotus-like eyes, lotus feet, very beautiful. And his activities, uh, when he came to this world, one of the first things he did was he gave he instructed his father in the path of self-realization, devotional service. So uh, his father's name, of course, as we know, uh, Kardamuni. He imparts, another thing he did, he imparted knowledge of the highest yoga system, Sankhya philosophy, to his mother, Sankhya Yoga. And he explained to her how to detach from this world, matter, and seek out, search out Lord Vishnu within the heart. Um, he, when he finished explaining the Sankhya philosophy to his mother, who had many questions for him, and she answered, he answered her questions. After that, he sought her permission and he left home. And she, at the same time, meditated on Kapil and achieved the spiritual world, the planet of Lord Kapil. And at this moment in time, it is said that Lord Kapil is still in this world. He's in trance for the deliverance of all the conditioned souls like ourselves. So his kindness, because of his kindness, we are still in this world. We are in this world gaining knowledge from his uh, endeavors. <clears throat> and uh, th there are people who've come across him. Uh, for example, the uh, sons of Sagar Maharaj, 60,000 of them, when they were looking for the sacrificial horse, which was kidnapped by Indra, they went uh, to the region where Kapildev was and they, dis they disturbed him, they cursed, they um, accused him falsely of stealing the horse. And he actually became quite angry at that time and he um, burnt them. Um, and eventually he was, uh, um, why does this? Uh, eventually Kapildev, uh, eventually, um, uh, those 60,000 sons, uh, children were saved by Bhagavatas, uh, Bhagiratis, uh, Tapasya, to bring down Ganga from the heavens. So this is where I wanted to stop uh, for the pastimes of Lord Kapil. So if there are any, any questions for any of the six um, personalities that uh, we heard about, you're welcome to ask. or share anything. I really enjoyed it. I understand now <laughs> the way everybody explained. Yeah. It was so, good. Yes, really enjoyed it. Really. Yeah. It was like, yeah, my language. I understood it. <laughs> uh, when you read, it's different, but yeah. when somebody tells you like a story, like everybody has, it's uh, it's 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 uh, uh, enjoyable and understand. I understand it. 
really enjoyed everybody's stories, all the Mahajan stories. Mm-hmm. Hare Krishna. Thank, Thank you. you so much, uh, Aruna, for sharing. Thank you, Mataji. <laughs> um, you're welcome. <laughs> Anybody else? Any questions? Any any comments? As Haribo, Haribo, I feel that taking part like this, participants, uh, I think wake them up to pay more attention and do a little bit of research and reading. Well, it made me do it definitely. Otherwise, true. we become a bit rusty. Yeah, true. Thank true. you, Haribo. Yes, that's a good point. Thank you. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> very good. Yeah. yeah. I just say everyone actually did a very, very good job. Yeah. Really. Well done, everyone. Mine was a short <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Matter. It doesn't matter. You covered all the points. <laughs> There's so much for Lord Shiva now. I'm looking back. And I, I, <laughs> went, I went yesterday and I thought, oh, gosh. Yeah, there's that's quite it. a bit. Uh, that's okay. It's, you covered the main... Save it for next time. <laughs> save it for next time. <laughs> yeah. Oh, dear me. Pressure. Yeah. <laughs> the next time, when we do Shivratri, when Shivratri comes, yeah, uh, you can share at that time. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. But yeah. you got to help me, though. Yes. Uh, no, 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 no problem. No problem. Okay. You, you got Have long enough time. time to do it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Why is Krishna. Shivratri Prabhu? Because no, I don't have... Oh, I think March? Or not? That, uh, two, three months, I think. Yeah, yeah. Ele- oh, 11th, of, 11th of March. Yeah. Oh, I've got plenty of time. Thank you, thank you, Prabhu. Uh, okay. I think you should all... Got, everybody should help me. Send me some PowerPoints <laughs> and then I'll... <laughs> thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much, everybody. You you want everybody to work for you, eh? That's right. Yeah, and, and, then, and then I will... Uh, Get the credit. credit. <laughs> I'll present it then. <laughs> you, you did that in the bank. You can't do it here. <laughs> I, did I not send you the presentation on Shiva? I think I did. There's quite a bit of information in there already. Yeah, yes, you did as well. I looked at that as well yesterday and I thought, oh, gosh, I should have compared both of them and I should have got a little bit more. But uh, I, it's my There's first time, so it's learning. There's, yeah. There's a lot about him. Yeah, it's a lot. Yeah. Very good. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Mm-hmm. Hare Krishna. Thank, Thank you, everybody. So uh, we can stop this point. Uh, 12 Mahajans Ki Jai. Yeah.